hello everybody so this time around I'm going to do another titration with you but this time I'm going to use a different indicator and I'm going to point out a few little improvements on my previous titration okay so we're going to start off we're going to use the hydrochloric acid again and its concentration is one mole uh, we'll pour it into the burette again okay remember that if you need to you can pour this in from ground level okay I'm going to pour it in from here I'm quite confident with this Okay, and I think I've just got it pretty much on zero. I'm going to say that that is zero. The meniscus is, n n it could go maybe half a milliliter more, but that's going to be okay for the purpose of the demonstration anyway. Right, okay, so that's our hydrochloric acid in the burette. Now, one thing I didn't say to you earlier is that one reason I won't, I wouldn't put the sodium hydroxide in there is, I don't know if we can see on the camera, but sodium hydroxide is not a particularly soluble substance. You can see there's a lot of deposit and debris at the bottom. And if we use this in the burette, it can block up the little taps here and stop them working properly. Unfortunately, exam papers don't take account of that. And so on exam papers, they quite often put the sodium hydroxide in the burette. But that's just an exam paper. It's not doing it for real. Um, okay, so we're gonna stick our um, conical flask underneath. And again, something I didn't mention last time, the reason we use a white tile on the bottom is so you can clearly see a colour difference. Okay, So the sodium hydroxide we are going to suck up with our uh, pipette filler. I called it a plunger earlier. It's a pipette filler. Okay, um, We'll use the 20 ml uh, flask again. Just be careful when you insert this over that you don't snap glass on there. It can be quite fragile. It just needs to push in gently. Okay. And if I squeeze here and suck up, that then release and it creates a vacuum. Okay. Pop the pipette inside there and push this little thing in there. It's labelled S. And that will gradually fill up. Be careful, this fills up more slowly and then it will shoot up the narrow part. So as soon as you filled up the big bulgy bit, slow down and then up to the top right now this does not need to be removed I'm, I'm, I'm in the habit of removing it and you guys when you come back downstairs and have proper lessons you'll realize we've got a superb new technician and she has pointed out to me that the empty here is used to just lower this and look at that brilliant that's sitting perfectly on the meniscus so um, we're going to pour that in our conical flask. So we'll just press the empty and it just pours through. It does take a little bit of time. You just have to be patient. Now the best way to get the last bits of dregs out is not to tap like I did earlier, it's just to touch the end and the liquid, most of the liquid will come out. Okay, so that's that done. Now I'm just going to pop that back on there and I'm going to keep the plunger on. That will also remind me that it's this particular pipette that I'm using and I can reuse it again with, for that plunger. Right, okay, so that's going to go underneath my burette. And I'm going to use an indicator that you probably haven't used before that's called phenol failing. There will be a spelling test. Here we go. Okay. And this is a two color indicator. And for titrations of this sort, that's what you would normally use. So let's put a few drops in there. And we notice we get this beautiful pink coloration. Now, being a two color indicator, it doesn't have a color for neutral. And now you might think that's a disadvantage, but in actual fact, we will turn it into an advantage. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So let's run through our um, conical, our burette here. Now, we know from our previous video 
that 10 millilitres approximately of this is needed to neutralise this. So I can run it down quite safely to about 8 um, fairly quickly without really worrying about the consequences. So if we watch, when I run it down to 8, you can probably see it go changing colour. Okay, so that's sitting on 8, and if I swirl it, it's still pink. Okay, if I add a little bit more and go to 9, give it a swirl. Now I'm going to add it in little um, volumes at a time, small volumes at a time. And I'm looking for a colour change. And in the end, we will end up adding it drip by drip. So if I can turn it ever so slowly, and it's always handy if you've got someone else here to do it with you. Because look at that, that's almost changed. Give it a shake, and there we go. It's completely changed, it's gone clear. As I said, it's a two color indicator. So this is pink when it's alkaline, and it's completely clear when it's acidic. It has no color for neutral. Let me talk about why that's an advantage. With the universal indicator, we get a complete range of colors. And it's very, very hard sometimes to determine when you've hit neutral. Because uh, what, what color is neutral? What shade of green is neutral? And that's where you might disagree with um, your colleagues that are carrying out this experiment. Here you can't disagree, it's a very sharp change, okay? It's a very definitive change. Okay, it doesn't have a neutral, but you knew, you know when you go clear, when it goes clear, you've gone slightly over the point at which it's been neutralized. So here we're getting a reading of, um, on this particular one, we've got 10.9. Uh, assuming I started on zero, my first trial for this would be 10.9, okay? So then we run it again, we'll probably run it down to 10, and add drip by drip, and we'd probably get slightly less than 10. That probably would have turned clear a little bit earlier. Okay, so this is basically how you carry out a titration. Remember that uh, you can fill that on the floor, lift it up to the table. That's okay. Glasses on, stools tucked in. Um, just make sure you've got everything you need to start with. So the indicator that you're using, the pipette. You probably won't have a stand like this when you're working. So you need to think about where this sits. You don't want to put it down the edge of the table where it's gonna roll off. You don't want to sit it in um, a very short beaker that it's gonna to topple. So just think about where you're gonna put things safely out the way. Um, and this is all about precision. This is all about working really, really accurately as a team to get a really good set of results. So when you come back down to science, this is something I will try and build time in for you to have a go at. But failing that, if that time's not available there, this is a required practical, but the exam board have said that with the required practicals now, it is not essential that you do them. What you do need to experience is either a demonstration, which is what I've shown you here, um, or using some software to see it simulated, and we, we, we're gonna look into that. Okay, so thank you and I'll include this in the team's lesson.